Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's take another look at what we call stellar classifications, especially when we talk about spectral class. And of course, the spectral class are the, uh, represented by the letters O, B, A, F, G, K, M. Those are the typical classification for the stars. And what we do here is we look at the spectral lines of the emissions coming to us. So the light coming to us from the, from the sun and from all the stars in the universe, they have what we call spectral lines in them. Actually, they are dark lines within a continuous spectrum of the rainbow colors of light. And those dark lines are caused by electrons in the atmosphere or, or in the outer layers of the stars uh, being excited and jumping up to higher levels then back down to lower levels. They're caused by the photons come from inside the star when they hit the electrons in the elements on the outside of the star. The electrons, they jump up and they jump back down and when they jump up, they absorb those photons and so those are then caused, those are then the missing colors, the missing lines that show up as very dark lines in the spectrum of the stars. The sun has over 800 of those lines all contributed to various elements within the sun and the reason why we can recognize what elements are there represented by those is by the specific, what we'd call the specific colors uh, that, are, that are then associated with specific wavelengths which are then associated with specific energy level differences in the electron jumps in the outer, outer orbits of those uh, atoms. The ones that we specifically look for are helium, hydrogen, silicon, magnesium, iron and calcium. And then when we talk about the M-class stars here, we also talk, look for titanium oxide. And you can see that depending upon the temperature of the outer layers of the star, the O-class stars of course are very hot, the B-class stars and A-class stars are also fairly hot, and because of that we have different kinds of electron jumps caused by the photons uh, reaching those outer layers. And so for example you can see that we have silicon, um, ionized silicon, but there's, the ionization here causes silicon to lose three electrons, here silicon loses two electrons, and there silicon loses one electron. And we can actually differentiate between what class of stars we're looking at by noticing which of the electron jumps are occurring in the outer layers of the star, which then causes certain wavelengths to be absorbed associated with those specific electron jumps. And from that we can actually determine what class of stars we're looking at. Notice when we start looking at the A and F and G class stars, the hydrogen lines become fairly prominent, so they become much darker, much, much wider, and so easily visible. And by measuring the relative strength, and as you can see the vertical axis here is the relative line strength, when we look at the relative strength of the lines caused by the helium, the electrons in the helium or the hydrogen or the magnesium, when we line those up we can see that as we go from B to A to F class stars, the helium lines become weak and the hydrogen lines become stronger, the magnesium lines reach a peak and then become weaker, and then if we go further the F and the G class stars, notice that the calcium plus one line, so this is where we have one electron missing, that the calcium plus one line starts getting stronger, stronger, stronger as the hydrogen lines become weaker. Then if you continue to go to the right and get to the cooler class stars like the G and the K class stars, notice then that the iron plus one where one electron is missing or neutral iron become more prominent in the line structure of the, of the um, spectrum that we get from the stars. And so by measuring the relative strength of these lines we can then determine what class star we're looking at. So not only do we determine the class star by the surface temperature which is associated with these classes right here, we can also do it by looking at the spectrum and do an analysis on the spectrum and notice which dark lines appear strong and which appear weak. Also notice that the, the neutral calcium line becomes stronger and stronger as we get cooler and cooler stars and eventually when we get to the cooler M-class stars we see titanium oxide appearing in the spectral lines. So that's actually a really good way for us to double check to see what class stars we're looking at. It's not always an exact science. A lot of these are approximations. Sometimes they're difficult to see because of the relative abundance of some of these elements in the stars which makes it difficult as well. And then uh, it turns out so that in order to do a good job in trying to figure out what actual star, what type of star we're looking at, we look at the surface temperature using Wien's law, we look, at a, we look at the color combination through special filters, the UBV filters, uh, U for uh, UV, uh, B for blue, and V for visible light filters, 
and we combine all that information to try and narrow down exactly what type of star we're looking at. This is indeed a very good tool by just simply looking at the spectral lines. Of course, it's not an exact size, and sometimes we have to cross-reference multiple measurements in multiple experiments to see what class star we're actually dealing with. So that's how we do that, and this gives us a nice visual representation as the surface temperature of the star cools down, which of the electron jumps will become more prominent than the spectral lines, and by doing a combination of looking for these various jumps in these various wavelengths, we can actually see how the determination can be made looking for the particular class of stars. In order to be able to get a more accurate feel or say about what actually we're looking at, what we've done is we've taken the classification of the stars, the various classes, O, B, A, F, G, K, M, and actually subdivided them into what we call spectral types. For example, we have uh, class A0, A1, A2, so we can actually subdivide this even a little bit more carefully, and so we call them the spectral type, narrowed down to a very small fraction of each class. We'll see that in a future video, how that is done. But you can imagine that, yes, as you move over from A to F, in that region here, you can see that the spectral lines will begin to change quite a bit, and we are actually able to pick that up and actually subdivide the classification even more finely than that, and that helps us determine what exact star we're looking at. So that way we can match up the exact temperature with the exact class and type, as well as the coloration that we get through the various filters. So it's uh, quite, an, quite a job to try and figure out when we look at a star, analyze the light coming from it, to know what exact type of star and class star we're looking at. So that's how we do that, and this is what we call spectral class searches through looking at the spectral lines in the spectrum of a star. That's how we do that.